morning. Glad to see you here this morning for our services. Let's all stand. We're going to begin with hymn number, doesn't matter, you don't have a hymnal. <laughs> but we are going to sing, Jesus is coming again. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Marvelous message we bring. Wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. The morning, the noon, maybe evening and maybe soon, coming again, coming again. time. We felt a little bad about the last week. We had, I think it was almost 20 minutes we had just standing for the song service and the scripture reading. So we're moving things around a little bit, trying to find the nice balance. So uh, pastor's going to come at this time with our scripture reading for the day. Well, we are changing uh, the order of the service just a little bit so that we can accomplish a couple different things. Uh, we want to not only have a good flu flow of the service, but we also want to uh, be able to have uh, some of the music that we want to be able to do uh, and live streaming there are copyright laws and some things that are uh, making that difficult and so uh, if you watch the live stream service now uh, going forward it's going to have about a 10 or 12 minute delay uh, it won't come on until we begin in the middle of the service to sing the congregational and uh, we're going to put the special in the beginning of the service and so we're making some changes so that we can uh, worship the Lord the way we want to and uh, continue to do the live stream uh, in a legal and a, and a proper way. And so uh, just bear with us. Uh, it's going to be a lot of everybody standing up and sitting down at the wrong time now. Uh, and it's good. We'll just shake y'all up a little bit. Uh, there's no reason to get into such a, a rut about things. But uh, turn in your Bibles to Psalm, uh, Psalms chapter 12 for our Bible reading today. Psalms chapter 12. And continue to pray uh, very steadfastly about the situation in Texas with the COVID. Uh, just the spike in the cases is just tremendous. Uh, we're setting records every day. Uh, and I just really feel like it won't be long until our governor uh, cracks under the pressure and puts us back into some type of shelter in place. And I'm uh, very, very reluctant to want to do that. I'm really, really wanting to be able to continue to meet in person like we have been. And so just continue to pray. God knows exactly what we need to do uh, and how to keep us safe. And he has kept us safe 
Uh, we've had a lot of families that have tested already, uh, come back negative, and so uh, we're very, very thankful for God's protection over our church and our family and our church people. So continue to pray uh, diligently about those things. Psalms chapter 12, Psalms chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fall uh, fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a tr double heart they, do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will uh, prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver, tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. storm still rages, but in the rock of ages, I'm resting warmly here under my Lord Jesus. Under his wings, and there he covered me, and now I can see.
Praise the Lord for His protection. It's a wonderful thing. Let's all stand once again. We're going to continue our song service. Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he love me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus. Us because he first loved me. Amen. Our next hymn is a wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We want to always be mindful of all the things that the Lord has provided, all that he has taken care of. His watch care over us. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. I'll change the stars, thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, I have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. something about this hymn. The first two verses can be sung for the whole world. The saved and the unsaved because God says that He allows the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. But this third verse, it applies to His people, to those who call upon Him. Pardon for sin and a And we can only claim it by faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. So think about the words of this third verse as we sing. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to hide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings of mine with ten thousand things high. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy 
God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Certainly we can be thankful for his faithfulness. Amen. It is good to see you this morning. Hopefully you've grabbed a bulletin. There's a few things in there. Uh, of course, on Wednesday night, it's been our grow groups, and we're about midway through the first session there. And you'll find in the foyer now, there's a sign-up for the se second session starting in just a few weeks. Uh, so you might start making plans. You can register in the foyer or online at graysonbbc.com uh, forward slash grow, and you can look there. Again, thank you for uh, being giving uh, in the tithes offering places in the back or online. Again, you can do that through Grayson bbc.com and then do your tithes and offerings there we're gonna have a word of prayer uh, and then we'll get on with the service father we come before you we're thankful for your goodness to us and thank you that we are allowed to meet together we had the freedom to do so Lord, we thank you for the protection that you've given over our congregation and the people of this church lord we pray that you continue to bless them you continue to use us to be a light and a witness not only in our community but around the world we ask for a special blessing over our missionaries today as they preach the gospel to their people in their fields. I pray that you give them fruit for the labor, that you bless them, you'd meet all their needs. We ask you to bless the offerings now that are given here or online or whichever way. Lord, we pray that you'd use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask you to bless the preaching that follows. God us, speak to our hearts in Christ's name. Amen. Well, our president has said it in speeches many, many times and tweeted it hundreds of times. You've all heard it. He calls them fake news. As a matter of fact, he even made an award in 2018 for fake news. He awarded it to the top 10 news outlets and stories that were the most fake. So why does our president talk so much about fake news? Well, the word fake means not genuine counterfeit. So news that is not totally true is fake news. Because it boasts of being newsworthy because of its veracity or truthfulness, but in reality it is false and filled with lies, therefore it is fake. Now we've had the same problem throughout all generations of human history with fake gods. They claim to be real, true, divine gods, but they are actually fake or false. We have statues, we have idols, sorcerers, genies, we have Greek mythology, Buddha, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, just to name a few. All posing 
as a God, a divine, all-powerful, all-knowing being, but not really God at all. Turn in your Bibles to what the Bible talks about, about this subject, about fake gods. In Psalms 115, Psalms 115, there are other places where this is addressed, but uh, this is the one that I had in my devotions when the Lord laid this message on my heart. So we're going to talk today about fake news and fake gods. Psalms 15, the Bible says in verse 1, Now unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Now, this, the psalmist just goes through what is very obvious, should be obvious, to the whole world. If you make your God, it's a fake God. I mean, that just should be obvious to everyone in the world. And yet the God of this world has blinded their minds so that they believe that somehow this statue that they've carved out of a tree is able to do divine things when they themselves can't do divine things. It doesn't make any sense at all. What he says here is that even though they're made out of precious material... Gold, silver, precious stones, there's, there's idols and there's uh, false gods all over everywhere that are beautiful, they're impressive, they're magnificent to look at. And you look at these uh, temples and you look at the, the way that they're adorned and all the gold and the silver and, and the precious things that they're made of and the architect or, or the artist that created these things is, is amazing and impressively talented. But... They have mouths, but they never speak. They have eyes, and they don't see. They have feet, but they don't go anywhere. Isn't it strange that you're God, that you're depending your whole eternity and all of your livelihood here on this earth, you're depending on that God, and it can't talk? Isn't that weird? It can't go anywhere? It doesn't hear anything. Is anybody else understanding that this is weird? When you get to verse 8, it gives us the real idea behind this. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Verse 8 says, They that make them are like unto them. Now that's the key. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Now, what happens when you make your own God, okay? I've got a bottle of water up here that sometimes I drink. I'm going to use this as an illustration. If I make this my God, oh, holy bottle of water, okay? It's going to bring me blessings. It's going to bless my family. I'm going to get rich. I'm going to be protected because of holy bottle of water. I make this. And since I made it, it's like me. And what you find in every case of a fake or false God is that the God, little g, expects so much out of its worshipers. You have all through human history... False, fake gods that demand incredibly awful things from their patrons or from their worshipers. You have the god of Molech that demanded for his protection 
the people in the Old Testament, he demanded that they sacrifice and burn alive their babies in his arms at the statue. You have other gods that demand sacrifice of, of animals or, or people. You dem they demand all these things. They demand that you do these things to please that God. And you know, there's no love that this God shows forth. There's no love. It's all fear. It's all uh, just uh, intrepidation. It's trying to do whatever we can as human beings to please this God. I think of Muhammad and, and some of the other ones that have uh, trained and, and brainwashed their followers to go and blow themselves up to, to kill the infidels, to commit suicide so that they can have a good standing with their God. Why do the false or fake gods demand so many uh, uh, atrocities and so many awful things? Because man made them. And man wants everybody to serve him. Man wants to get what he wants. There's no love there. There's no compassion. There's no uh, forgiveness. There's nothing in man uh, that's innately good. We're all sinners saved by grace, praise God. And then when you create your own God, you portray and you inject that God with your own sin. One of these days, I'm going to preach a message about the fact that false gods expect you to appease them. Our God just wants to please you. You see, our God, the God of the Bible, the real God, doesn't demand that you sacrifice your children on an altar or burning them alive. Our God actually is the one that came down to this earth and gave his life for you. You see, the psalmist has hit the nail on the head here. When they make their gods, they're like unto them. Their God takes on their qualities. There's no compassion there. Look at Greek mythology. You have those gods that come down and they rain fire and lightning on, on mankind. And they're either trying to mate and be part of mankind because they're so uh, disdained up there in, in their celestial place that they're so bored they want to come down here and kind of play with mankind. Well, what kind of God is that? That's what a human being would do if they were God. Our God is not up in heaven trying to play with and manipulate of the earth and mankind. Our God, ever since the beginning of time and the foundation of the world, has been trying to bring all mankind back to him so that we could fellowship and have eternity with him. That's what a real God does. But see, a fake God, you portray, and if you go down and study false gods, and you study religious systems... Every single time those gods, those fake gods, exhibit characteristics of mankind, fallen man, sinful nature, they all have those characteristics because the people that made them made the God just like they are. You know, I remember when I was a kid, and I've watched kids do this uh, even now, and it's really funny because they... When they play together, they have their imaginary storyline the way they want it to work. Have you ever seen this? The little kids will be sitting there on the playground or wherever they're at, and they'll say, now, you pretend that you are a fireman, and you come in, and well, let's pretend we have a fire. And so when you come in, you've got to spray bubble gum on the fire so that it'll go out. Let's pretend that. And then the fireman, the pretend fireman says, okay, but if I'm going to do that, you need to pretend this and this and this. And they pretend their whole storyline out, and they make it all up as they go. And then eventually, almost inevitably, one kid's going to get mad at the other kid because of the storyline that they invented. They don't like it. And then that's where all the fighting goes on at the playground. Can't you see that the world is trying to make up their own storyline? They don't like the truth. They don't like what the Bible says. They don't like what the real God has said. And so let's make some other gods that will say what we want them to say. That will let us do what we want to do. 
What God, real God, would allow you to involve yourselves in all kinds of sexual immorality and actually promote it when we understand from a human, physical, psychological, and every other standpoint what damage that does to a society, what real God would want his people to do that? But see, it's, it's inside the, man, the, the heart of man. It's that sinful nature that wants to project it out on a God so that I can have permission to do what I want to do. Well, our God, however, is real. He really exists. He really hears. He is actually present. He can move. He can walk. Matter of fact, he can be and is anywhere he wants to be. And he talks to us. Matter of fact, he talked to me just an hour ago in my office. And he really, really, truly loves you. Now, go back to verse 3 in Psalms 115. See, in this text, the heathen, those unbelievers out in the world, are saying, okay, Christian, you said that your God is this and this and this. Where is he? We want to see him. We can show you our God. Here he is. Where's your God? Well, our God, verse 3, is in the heavens. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means he's everywhere. <laughs> God is a spirit. He's not in, he never would and never will put himself down into some kind of idolic form so that we can worship the form. We are supposed to worship God for his being and who he is, for who he is, not because we see a shape or some kind of symbol. God is not contained in anything. Our God, where is our God? He's in the heavens. What does that mean? Well, it means in the atmosphere. Of the earth. It means in space. It means back on past whatever space is. In the third heaven. He's in his throne. Well is he in his throne. And in space. And in the atmosphere. And here in this meeting all at one time. Absolutely. That's our real God. Your bottle of water can't do that. So our response to those unbelievers that say, where is your God? There he is. He's in the heavens. And this is the, the best part. This is the part I like. And he hath done whatsoever he pleased. There's nobody that can stop God from doing what God wants to do. Now, I'm not going to do it. Because some people that claim will get mad at me. But if this was really my God, I can take the lid off and pour the water out. And you know what? The water can't do anything about it. The water's not going to go, no, 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 don't do it. I'm going back in. And isn't it strange that those idols and those fake gods... Anybody, anytime that wants to, can just come in and chop them up. They can just burn them. They can do anything to destroy it that they want. And that fake God can't do anything if we decide he can't. But our God, the real God, does whatever he pleases. And there's nothing humanity is going to do to stop it. I just can't understand why somebody would want to give their life and their eternity to serve something that I made. Verse 2. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? 
Now, there's so many people and so many nations and religions and groups of people that get really bent out of shape or backwards about this thing that we can't see God. Well, show me God and I'll believe. Well, it's not faith if we show him to you. God has done everything he can to give his presence and to make himself known to humanity. You can't do more than God's done throughout history to show himself to mankind. And they still don't believe. It's a heart problem. It's a faith problem or lack thereof. It is not a fact that God, it's not a problem with God. It's a problem with us. Now, notice verse 1. We're going backwards here. You're not really supposed to go backwards in the Bible, but we're doing it today. Verse 1 says, Now, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Now, who gets the glory for the water bottle God? I do. Because I'm the one that's going to teach all of y'all how to serve the water bottle. And I'm, gonna, I'm the one that tells y'all what the water bottle wants. And I'm the one that tells y'all everything that we have to do. And I'm the one that gets the money that y'all give to the water bottle God. I'm the one that gets the power. I'm the one that gets the prestige. I'm the one that gets the glory. But when you serve a real God, he gets the glory. And every time, now listen to me, church, every time that you take a little bit of the glory of God for yourself, you have robbed God of his glory, not in a general sense, but to yourself and to the people around you. You can't take God's glory away. God has glory, and it doesn't matter whether you acknowledge it or not. doesn't matter whether you admit it or not. doesn't matter whether you give it to him or not. God has glory. But when we take a little piece of it every once in a while for ourselves, in our minds, we're diminishing the glory of God. Psalmist said, no, 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 no. Not unto us. Not for us. We don't want the glory. We serve a real God, and we want him to have all the honor and the glory for everything. Every time you get a blessing, every time you accomplish something, every time something happens in your life, you better give glory to God because he's the one that did it. Because we serve a real God. It's not a fake God. It's not fake news, and it's not a fake God. We serve a real, living, holy, just, righteous, loving, compassionate God. Now, you say, well, preacher, I don't have a water bottle in my house that I worship. Well, I would hope not. I don't have any other statues or any other false gods or fake gods in my life either. Do we? Are we sure? You see, it may not be an idol made of wood. Or it may not be a statue made out of gold. But it might be a bank account. Now, I don't have any reason to worship my bank account. But some people do. It could be an athletic accomplishment. It could be a, an intelligence factor that you, uh, your education. It could be your job, your career. It could be almost anything. It could be a talent that God has given you. It could be a car. It could be a house. Now, let's say that you are spending way too much time and effort and energy, and you are basically setting up your car as your God. Well, I believe that a car is an inanimate object. Okay? I don't care how much Siri talks to you. Your car can't actually talk. I know that's confusing for some of you. Siri only just 
says what she's programmed to say to your question. Okay, y'all got that? Siri is not real. She doesn't exist. She's not some person invisible in your car that's answering all your questions. Okay? It's kind of like a fake God. Because what's happened is your car is programmed with all these responses. And every time you talk, you get the response that man has programmed into the car. But your car can't really talk. I love those cartoon movies, the really, really old, old, old Disney movies. Way, way back when you could still watch Disney movies. And they had the car actually talk to you. But your car cannot talk to you. It can't walk around. If you get out in the garage and your car has opened the garage door and took off, uh, you've got a problem. But we understand the ludicrousy of people that worship a wooden statue. And yet a lot of times in our Christian life, we worship a metal object, a big structure made out of wood, a house, or some kind of green paper. So before we throw a lot of stones at people that worship false gods and fake gods, Let's make sure that we don't have any of them established in our lives. Now go to Isaiah chapter 44. I want you to, to read this. We're just going to read through it. I'm not going to comment and we'll be finished. I want you to have the, the words of this text to fall on your ears and impact your heart a little bit. Just open your mind to this. This is an amazing verse of scripture, verses of scripture as we think about this idea of fake gods. Isaiah 44 verse 17 says this. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burnt part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel. For thou art my servant, God says, I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Bring forth into singing, ye mountains, O forests, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself. In Israel. If you're tempted to worship at the feet of a fake God, whether it be a car, a bank account, a talent, a house, or a graven image, remember those things did not secure your forgiveness for your sin. Those things did not save you and give you eternal life in heaven. Those things cannot and will not love you unconditionally for all time. Those things are not only fake news, they're fake gods. And we serve a real, genuine, not counterfeit God that loves us and cares for us and wants to see the best for us. And I want you to remember, He forgave you of every sin not made up in the heart of a sinful man, not made up in some man's imagination. Our God is real, and therefore he's different than every other God that man has tried to create. He is not a fake God. He's a real God. Would you stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed?
every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we've done our very best today. It's not much, but we've done our very best to shed some light on this subject of idolatry. God, I've preached the message that you gave me in my heart, and I've done the best I can. And now, Lord, we are, as we have been at the beginning, de- totally dependent on you, the real God, the real, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. We are dependent on you to do a work in our hearts. Nothing that I have said today is going to influence anyone if your Holy Spirit doesn't take it and use it in the hearts and lives of the believers. God, would you move and work and help us to look in our lives and do some survey and see, is there anything that I've set up that's more important in my life than God? If so, then that is a God that I have created. God, would you help us to just view our heart and our life and see if there's anything there that would not please you that is partially or even fully idolatry. God, I just pray that you would help us to understand it just doesn't make any sense to serve other things when we can serve you. God, do a work in our hearts today, would you please? We'll thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As Brother Don sings a verse of invitation today, God has spoken to your heart. Maybe he's already showed you a place in your life where you put some more importance on a thing or something or an event or some family or whatever, a family member, whatever it may be. If God has shown you something that you put in his place, let's get it down. Let's take care of it today. Let's get it out of that place and put God back where he belongs. As we sing. The Savior is waiting.